Victoria. First of all, the issue as to whether or not you should have low regulation, no regulation, or heavy regulation is always, has always been in every political assembly a political matter. So let us be very, very clear now. There are some phrases in the Minister's speech that in some sense give the game away. One, one phrase is a very interesting one. He refers to the real economy. Now, the real economy is terribly important. It is that for which we need capitalization. It is that for which we need job, for job creation. It is to assist the traded economy. It is to promote exports. It is to achieve a balance of trade and ultimately a favorable balance of payments. But the minister doesn't say anything about the alternative economy the economy other than the real economy. The phrase is his. The truth of the matter is, is that like a cancer through the international financial system, products that were not related to anything real, products that were based, if you like, on virtual future possible yields that would in turn be translated into dividends to shareholders who made insane for returns, gave bonuses to people to speculate and gamble. Thus it is yesterday when I was attending the conference organised by Concern on World Hunger Day, Jeffrey Sachs could say that the bonuses paid in a single year on Wall Street exceeded the total budget for aid on the planet. Now, you have straight away made a distinction, if you like, between the real economy and the speculative virtual instruments that were there internationally. Now, you might say this is, if you like, the lay-by into which those responsible for the Irish financial system have put their wagon as they seek to avoid responsibility. The, sec the issue that the public are asking is, this is a guarantee scheme. What does it guarantee? Does it guarantee a return to the more of the same? Is there a single whit of admission in any of the people who took the decisions to be part of the international greed that they wish to change? The answer is that there is none. One after the other, they parade through the newspapers offering comments about what they suggest is some kind of national crisis that involves the patriotic humiliation of everybody, whether they were participating or not in this greed. Now, this, apart from being lazy, is stupid, and it will not bring us, if you like, very much farther in relation to a regulatory framework. There are serious issues, solvency, security, liquidity, capitalization, and what we discussed today was just part of that, and we all want to be positive about this. But we all want also to see some evidence somewhere of an admission the speech, the phrase, that the phrase used by the minister has some meaning. He says, the minister, what I've heard this morning, the model is changed. Where is the evidence that the model is changed? You're dealing with the same people. You're not crucially changing their decision-making practices. There's no evidence that you're changing their attitude to capitalization. You have no evidence that they are removing themselves from their addiction to virtual, bogus, speculative financial products and turning to what you rather, and I agree with you, idealistically describe as the real economy. You're responsible for the real economy. After your changes yesterday, you'll be paying for the unemployment. You'll be paying for you have to deliver what you, you said you had to deliver. This medicine that you had for the media like to help you in explaining that everybody has to take. I find an extraordinary arrogance in the Irish banking sector. There's an inability in the regulator to admit that he was wrong. There is an inability at the central bank to suggest that they ever drew attention to such statutory or measures as were urgently necessary to in fact try and insulate the Irish economy from the madness that was going on internationally. And it's interesting that you give the game away for them in the middle of your speech again. You use the word, you don't use the word crisis, you take their word. What is their word? Their word is disturbance. 
So you use the word disturbance more than once in your speech. So this is just a disturbance. And you offer a guarantee then, paid for the taxpayer, a guarantee that I would describe as in fact solid and written in steel. It refers, for example, on the second page of your speech, the state is unconditionally and irrevocably guaranteeing the covered liabilities of the participating institutions until the 29th of September 2010. But then you get all soft when you come to provide the guarantee for the public who want to say, who are asking the question, where is the return to the real economy with such capitalisation as will, for example, take capital projects in the public realm that have high employment content and will assist ordinary people? It isn't there. And then again you come along to the two directors that you not, is not must, must appoint, that you may appoint. You may appoint one or two. You refuse to say whether they will be in fact among 15 other directors. There will be non-executive directors, hurlers on the ditch. You don't say how they will influence the decision making of any banking process. And yet you describe to say, you are, go on to say that there is going to be a change of culture. On page 45, for example, there is a, a piece where, if you like, having looked over the water and some of the officials in finance decided to say, we must say something about corporate social responsibility. How is this to be achieved? For example, will the Irish Banking Federation, the people who have delivered us this where we are, and I'd love to hear you say that. I'd like to hear you say, the people who brought us to this point must make some admission. Not that, they were, that there was a disturbance, but in fact, let's remember what they did. They said, you at times spoke about light regulation. Remember what the model was. The model was regulation slows you down. Le regulation is a burden, as you've just heard my colleague John Burton say. It's standing in the way of the new glittery Irish rich becoming billionaires. The least time has expired. And I want to just then finish by saying this. Yes, in relation to the debate that we must have now. We must have a debate that will deal, I'm glad of all of the assurances, if they are real, I hope so, in relation to solvency, in relation to security and in relation to liquidity. But I have doubts about the source from which they come, the regulator. But I do want you to say this and I conclude by saying this. It is time that the Minister just admitted the model was wrong. The model brought the world to its knees at a time of hunger. The model was wrong in Ireland. The model was wrong in relation to the disastrous effects it has brought through Irish society. And I say this with absolute certainty. The public have no interest in providing a guarantee for more of the same. It's over. They want to hear you say it's over. And they want real representation on the banks. They don't want puppets. And they want those who brought us to this disaster, this, this poverty, all those cuts you announced yesterday. They announced them to, to just come out and say that they followed a model that, was, that brought us misery. There's no sign of any of that. We're not here to solve some disturbance in a racket. We are here as parliamentarians to give voice to the people's right to have an accountable, fair, sustainable banking system.